Recently, I made a few videos talking about the homegrown operating systems of China and India, ruthlessly mocking the so-called Bharat Empire, saying India lacks core technology and blindly chases an operating system without a software ecosystem, only to end up with more jokes. But in those videos, I just briefly touched on productivity software office tools and communication apps, without diving deep into another key part of an operating system's ecosystem. Games. Yes, games matter more to an ecosystem than productivity stuff. Once an operating system has a rich lineup of games, it can quickly grab a ton of users. With that user base, all sorts of productivity tools and office software start pouring into the ecosystem. Take Apple's early iPhone. Compared to traditional phones, it nailed basic stuff like communication. But another big reason it took off fast was its slick system optimization, giving early mobile games a perfect environment to shine. Nokia's Symbian was a mess to optimize and tough to develop for, while Android got bogged down by Java's virtual machine eating up performance. iOS, though, offered a smooth development setup and efficient native code execution, giving the iPhone a huge boost to rise fast. Yep. The early iPhone leaned on better experiences with light games like Fruit Ninja Angry Birds and Plants vs. Zombies to pull ahead of other phones. The massive iOS ecosystem we see today, with drawing apps, 3D software editing tools, and office suites, all came after it built a giant user base, when companies jumped in to adapt their stuff. So I'm super optimistic about China's homegrown operating systems, especially Huawei's Harmony OS. Given time, it's bound to thrive like Apple's iOS or macOS ecosystems. China's got WPS, WeChat, Alipay, and TikTok. All homegrown productivity software communication tools, payment systems, and entertainment apps. Plus, it's got one of the top game industries in the world. Even against the U.S. game industry, it can hold its own. China's game industry rests on a few big players and Tencent's definitely leading the pack. It rules the domestic market, and its global reach is impressive. Tencent holds 49% of Epic Games, the folks behind Unreal Engine 5, making it a major shareholder, and it's rolled out massive hits like League of Legends. On top of that, it controls PUBG Mobile and Honor of Kings, absolute juggernauts in China, while overseas it rakes in players with localized versions. NetEase has been grinding in the MMORPG scene for years, with games like Fantasy Westward Journey and On My OG holding steady at home and abroad thanks to solid craftsmanship and long-term management. NetEase doesn't match Tencent's global clout, but it shines in places like Japan. Then there's MiHoYo, a rising star these past few years, driven by tech and cultural flair. Genshin Impact, their open-world game. Hook players in Europe, the US, and Japan with stunning visuals and fresh gameplay, setting the bar for Chinese games going global. Their follow-up Honkai Star Rail keeps that momentum rolling. Beyond the Giants China's got new companies stepping up. Take Game Science's Black Myth Mukong, China's first real AAA title. It smashed 10 million sales worldwide after launch, with over 3 million players online at once showing China's got chops in high-end game development. There's also smaller gems making waves internationally, like Dyson Sphere program on Steam, built by YouthCat Studio. This sci-fi construction game won over players with its unique ideas and polish. China's domestic game market is mostly locked down by Tencent NetEase and MiHoYo, but fresh challengers keep popping up, keeping things lively. The big dogs use their cash and tech edge to pump out top-tier games, while smaller outfits carve niches with creativity. That push and pull keeps the quality climbing. Now let's talk about how Chinese games are doing overseas. The potential's huge. Southeast Asia's a gold mine for Chinese games going global since the culture's close and phones are everywhere. Honor of Kings overseas version Arena of Valor is massive in Thailand and Vietnam racking up downloads and active players like crazy. PUBG Mobile, the overseas take on Peacekeeper Elite, dominates in Indonesia and Malaysia too. 
thanks to smooth controls and local events keeping folks hooked. India is another story. People there don't spend much, but with a giant population, they love free games. PUBG Mobile was a monster hit in India before it got banned. And even after, players scrambled to find ways to keep playing stuff like Free Fire, which has Chinese fingerprints on it. Tencent's Call of Duty Mobile also pulls in Indian players with its free-to-play setup and low hardware demands. Perfect for the younger crowd. Europe and North America demand quality. And Chinese games are stepping up. Genshin Impact blew up in the West with its open world and gorgeous art. While Black Myth Wukong made a splash at launch. Proving Chinese titles can hang with the big leagues. Sure, there's hiccups. Localization isn't always spot on, with shaky translations or plot tweaks, and brand recognition lags behind Western giants. But those gaps are closing bit by bit. Looking at the game industry's chain from start to finish, China's got strengths and gaps. Up top in development, China's ace at mobile game tech, keeping costs down and cranking out stuff fast. Truth is, Chinese companies have serious development muscle. They churn out quick hits using off-the-shelf engines, but they also craft polished originals from scratch. Games like Genshin Impact nail detailed textures and sleek styles, oozing high-end vibes, all while running smooth as butter. Then there's Naraka Blade Point, a martial arts battle royale from 24 Entertainment, killing it on Steam with fluid combat and optimization that works on modest rigs. Unlike some Western stunners that guzzle resources, Tons of Chinese hits run great on mid to low end gear, which is a big win. In the middle with publishing and operations, Tencent and crew are powerhouse players, and their overseas localization is leveling up. Honor of Kings tweaks skins and events for different countries, nailing what local players want. Down at distribution, China leans on platforms like Steam and Google Play since it doesn't own many global channels yet and brand power still needs a boost. Overall, China's tech and operations are rock solid, but it's got work to do on original IPs and building its own worldwide distribution muscle. Looking ahead, China's game industry is set to soar. Tencent, MiHoYo, and NetEase are doubling down on going global, pouring cash into new tech and markets. Newcomers are rising too with stuff like Black Myth Wukong showing China can crank out world-class hits. Overseas markets still have room to grow. Southeast Asia and India are far from tapped out, and Europe plus North America will warm up as quality keeps climbing. The domestic market's already massive, and with government backing getting stronger, China's game scene could slug it out with the US toe-to-toe, -to -toe, maybe even edge ahead in some spots. On the homegrown ecosystem front, with this killer game industry backing it up, China's operating systems like Harmony OS have a bright future. If heavyweights like Tencent and MiHoYo get their games humming on Harmony OS, domestic users will jump on board fast. Android's a mess with fragmentation, and its experience doesn't stack up to iOS. Plenty of Chinese folks are fed up with it, so Harmony OS has a real shot to fill that void. Once it locks down China, pairing homegrown chips with the OS Plus games productivity tools and communication apps can start creeping overseas. Southeast Asia's already friendly turf, and Europe or North America could bite if the quality holds. Down the line, China could build an ecosystem to rival the US, maybe even take its place on the global stage.